Hello, everyone. Welcome to Brenda's Brushstrokes and Bisque on January 16th, painting live at 7 p.m. Central Time. We are going to start our Penguin Party January box this night and work on it for the next four Thursdays. So this is what we will be trying to achieve by the time we're done painting everything. So we have our penguin stack that lights up and we have our two little side penguins and you could have them separate. They don't have to be together. But that's what we're going to work on. We'll set those guys aside. So your package would have came and everything would have been bundled up nicely with um, air bubbles and wrapped with little labels. Your little extra package would have been in there. And in our extra package, we have a bunch of little goodies. We didn't do the whole box this time, so we can save down, save some of the rattling noises. So we had a couple extras in there this time. We have a set of ball styluses that are great to use for putting dots in eyes and dots in other places, dots in designs. So that's a nice extra in your package this month. And another extra in your package is your clip light for your penguin stack. And then we have another little goodie bag, and that's a little penguin too that Courtney found for us. And in there we have the scarves for our stack. And we have some glitter. And then we also have our pin lights that go in our um, penguin stack. On the side you'll have holes. And that's where we'll glue those in too when we're all done. So those are all the little goodies you need to finish your project besides the sealer and the paint. So we'll set those aside. Then we also ordered, <coughs> excuse me, I still have this cough, um, our Mako color flyer that we could get. And if you open to page 37, that's the Mako acrylic stains, and we carry those. So you could always have those added to your box. You just need to message us, and then we can add those to your box, and they'll actually ship free. Um, we cover the cost on the shipping as long as it fits in the box. So in all of Acrylics are now $3 except for the specialty ones like the um, metallics. And then we do have Doc Holiday colors 1 through 62, um, but there are some specialty colors that cost more, and we don't have those yet, so we'll hopefully be adding those in the future. But you can save this little um, pamphlet because we paid for them, and I thought you guys would get um, good use out of them. You can add that to your Duncan um, package flyer that we shipped, I think, in December. So then your little penguins, they were all bundled up with the little labels on them, and the big one was labeled too. So I'm just going to put those aside instead of making a lot of noise. <coughs> so when you unwrapped your bubble wrap, you would have your penguin stack, and then your two little penguins. And we're going to, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> it looks like the cough's going to kick in here. Courtney asked if she can take over. It might be interesting. That's for sure. <laughs> I know they say this cough lasts for about four weeks, so. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. I am. I have been sucking on cough drops before we started. <coughs> so what I'm going to do is base coat out. I'm actually not going to base coat. Oh, I'm going to base coat. Um, but I'm going to start with white, and it'll be the Duncan OS 431, and I'm just going to paint out the white on the faces, and I'm not going to worry about lining that out. We'll do that um, with the black with the liner brush. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> So I'm just going to grab a round nylon brush. You do not want a stiff bristle brush for this. That's used for dry brushing. You want a um, round nylon brush or a fat, flat nylon brush or even a pure sable brush, the natural um, bristle brushes. Those are great too. And I'm um, we're going to do this because we had new subscribers again, so we want to make sure everyone knows how to base coat. And I just dip my brush in the 
white paint and I have a round and my sizes wore off but I believe it's a size five. <laughs> oh boy. So I'm just going to brush back and forth on the white on the face. You want to bl brush out any ridges and you it's okay to go onto the black area. We don't have to wait waste a lot of time lining that out. We'll do that with the black when we come back. Go ahead and cover his whole um, nose. That way the rust will cover, cover even. <coughs> Excuse me. I was, um, I get about three spells of these a day and then about three at night. And once I get through them, um, it's okay, but sometimes it could last an hour. Um, so I'm just brushing out my white so it's nice and smooth. Um, it's okay if you get onto the black area, we'll line that out. And the eyes too, that's okay. So we'll just brush that out. And you just want to go back and forth. Do you have a soda, Courtney? Maybe that'll help. I don't know if that'll help or not, but it's not going away. I can feel it coming. So we'll just brush it out. <coughs> so these guys are actually pretty easy to do. And they go pretty quick too. <coughs> so they say this last four weeks, so I got about a week and a half of, of this cough to go yet. <coughs> and I for one will be happy when it's gone. So I'm just brushing out my white nice and smooth. <coughs> I should have stopped and brought some soda along maybe. I didn't think of it. it don't always help though. I'm about so sick of cough drops, you just can't believe it. Thank you. Gordy says I'll be up till midnight. I doubt it. It's fine. <coughs> I bought different cough drops yesterday. One of them, I tried two different kinds. I'm on my fourth bag. The other one was called Fisherman's Friend. Oh my God. I had to spit it out. The whole box was going in the garbage. Oh, good grief. I never had anything so nasty in my life. Oh, they were brown. Reminded me of fish. And the taste was even worse. Whew. Like pure menthol. I don't know how anybody could suck on them things. So again, I'm just brushing out our white. <laughs> And I want to get down onto the bottom. You always want your bottom finished too. It was a nice day here today, but it's cold, although not terribly cold, um, but close cold. close to single digits, but it's not below zero, so we're not going to complain too much. Okay. So I'm covering up his nose with the white too, that way the Rust will just cover more even. It won't be blotchy. It'll be an even coat of rust then. Right on to the bottom. <coughs> Excuse me. And then I'm just going to go back and look. And make sure I got my white covered all the way up to the black. Where the black should start. And that looks pretty good. So um, wash out my brush. When I wash out my brush, I usually like to have that Harold's brush cleaner pad in the bottom, but I don't. So I'll just brush back and forth um, your bristles on the bottom. You don't want to jab, stab up and down. That's going to break your bristles off. You just want to brush back and forth, um, kind of turn your brush, and that'll clean 
that'll clean that out right up to the ferrule, and that's what you want. You want nice clean brushes always. So we just brush back and forth till it's um, clean. Then I like to take a paper towel and put it in there, and then um, it's actually going between these two fingers, and then you can pinch it to a point so you're like grooming your brush so you kind of keep it at that point. <coughs> Excuse me. So we'll lay that one aside and we'll gra grab some black. And I'm just using a, um, we're just using acrylic stains again and we're using Duncan. This is OS 479 black. <coughs> We'll use a little bit. Cordy got us a brush cleaning pad we'll put in the bottom. So this is the Harold's brush cleaning pad that I talk about all the time and you can throw this in the bottom of your sink. It's just a rubber pad and it's great for cleaning your brushes. So you can throw it in the bottom of your sink and let the water roll um, run and then brush back and forth or you can put it in the bottom of your um, water bowl. That's usually what I like to do with it too. <coughs> So now we got our black and we're going to grab our liner. Um, I guess I shouldn't use my silver falcon because you guys, most of you don't have that. We'll use our um, liner that's in our beginner's brush set and that's our Royal and Majestic 4595. It's a nice uh, beginner's liner. It has a nice point on it. Um, if you're looking for a better liner, we did get some um, new ones. Courtney, I don't know if she's got them on our website yet or not, but <coughs> excuse me. It's um, just a step up from this liner and it's a really nice liner too. So um, maybe next week, by next week, she'll get all that stuff posted for us. Um, it's a really, really nice liner. So I'm just dragging my brush through the black, the liner, twirling it to a point. And now I have my piece anchored on the table and I'm going to anchor my hand onto my piece and I want to go where I think it should be lined out where the black is meeting the white and I usually start away from it and then merge over to where I want the line that way I can see where it's actually going and maybe Courtney wants to move this in a little bit so everybody can see better. I'm actually going to wash that brush out because it looks like there's some old green in there from last week. And I'm just going back and forth on that scrubby pad. That looks better. And I have black in my hands because I was painting the birds for our next box. Um, so I have them done before I leave so Courtney can... Um, post pictures. I have the card or the chickadees done, but I have to finish the cardinals yet tonight. Um, so again, I'm in, so now I quit and I'm gonna um, start to pick up, and I will put start in the black, about an eighth of an inch away from my line, and then I'll merge over to where my line is, and that way I can see where that black starts, and then I have a nice straight line without um, being off and crooked and missing it. But then I want to go back and brush that out so that there's no ridges there. And I want to grab some paint again. And then I'm going to start away and then merge over to my line. That way I can see where my black is. And a liner is good for this because you can load it up with paint and you can get a look further with your line. If you're using a um, big brush, it's harder to do the little lines or the lining out anyway. And I want to brush that out. And once you have it all lined out, you can come back and um, use a bigger brush. So you can see what on that white, I'm starting out away from my line and I can see where I want that line and it's just easier to line up your lines that way. At least for me, I'm not, um, there's always more other ways to do things. This is just how I do things. So don't feel like that's the only way to do it. So now I actually got him cradled in my arm here so I could come this way so I could keep going. When I was going the other way, um, you can not quite line it up the way you want it. So it's better to just keep going um, for in one direction.
And you just got to keep turning them. <coughs> Excuse me. I'll try to, I'm trying to watch where it is on the camera so you guys can see too, but it's, I got to see it too. No, it's fine. So I just want to go back and brush that out because I don't want that big hump there. And you just want to take your time doing this. And if you get white on the black, don't have a heart attack. Don't worry about it. You just finish out your black, and you can go back and touch it up, up with the white. Um, you're really not going to ruin anything. It, most things can be fixed. Just, just paint it over with the white. and you gotta, If you have to touch up the black again because you got white on the black, you just keep touching it up until you get it the way it needs to be. Don't stress over it. So Courtney's adjusting this because she can see um, what the what's actually being shown on the tablet. What I see on the screen is a little bit different than what you guys are seeing. So I'm just going to slowly brush that out so I don't get black all over my white. And when I come to the bottom. I want to bring it right to the bottom and join it up too because you want that bottom just as pretty as the rest of it. Now I always like to go on that inside ridge a little bit. So now this guy actually has a pinhole in him and we kept him. We didn't ship him off to anybody. Um, so that's what I'm painting on. I'll ac actually fix that um, with some plaster plaster of Paris so so I have his little face all lined out so now we want to get where his um, his head is touching the next guy so again I'm going to start away merge over see how you can see um, where your black paint is by doing that and you can just keep merging it up till you get it right where you want it So now my liner is getting nice full with paint. You can see I went quite a distance with that. But I do want to brush this out back here. So again, I got my hand resting on the table so that my piece is nice and solid. And I'm resting this other hand on my piece too. It keeps that brush nice and um, solid so it's not jiggling all over the place. And we'll brush that out. So if you guys have questions, post them on there, and Courtney will watch for them, and she'll um, say, hey, we got questions, and she'll shoot it at me, and I'll see what we can answer. Um, we still have boxes of these. I poured more bisque, so um, um, we don't have any ready to ship tomorrow, but um, by early next week, we would have more to ship. They have to be cleaned and fired yet, so... Um, so I'm also pouring the uh, February's box, as you've seen by the pictures, with the birds and the um, bird houses. Um, I'm going to have about half of them poured and cleaned. Um, they need their final cleaning, and then they'll get fired, hopefully this weekend, and then we can get those shipped, and or not shipped, the bubble wrapped, and hopefully get ahead of the game here a little bit because we've been... Um, Time crunching it since well since August really, but really crunching it from November through December and early January with the craft shows and Christmas and <clears throat> so Courtney's bringing me the birds to show you guys. So I'll paint out this black and then we'll take a quick look at our birds. Yep. So I'll just keep lining that up, but we'll sit him aside for a second. 
<coughs> excuse me. Um, so you're, um, maybe we'll show them the bisque first. Do you have bisque to show them or not? I probably have it all, huh? Okay. She'll be getting two birdhouses, and this is one of them. It's, um, I don't know, probably five and a half inches. has one hole in it. Um, then the other one is a little bit taller, uh, probably six and a half inches, and that has two holes in it. So that's the bisque birdhouses that you'll be getting. And then to go with that, um, you'll be getting two bisque um, chickadees. So a set, a set of two chickadees. And we don't have any bisque white cardinals because I uh, painted them. I'm working on those for the box. But here, and you'll also have a set of bisque. They'll be white like the chickadees, a bisque of car set of cardinals. So these I'm actually working on to paint red. Um, so that's you'll have so you'll have a set of cardinals, a set of chickadees. I'll switch them around, and then you'll have the two birdhouses. Courtney's going to move it out, I think, so you can see. So you'll have the um, two chickadees and a birdhouse, and then the tall birdhouse and two cardinals. So then um, go back to this guy, and I painted the small one. It's done with the metallic on the roof. And we have the, um, the little dowel will be in your extra and your um, Spanish moss. And then I did a kind of a marbling technique with a sponge on, on the sides and then the silver on the bottom again. And then I just put a little bit of silver on the sides just for a little pizzazz. But, um, so that's the silver metallic on the roof. And then this is the extra in the, in the box. It's the um, metallic rub-ons. I believe it's called the brights. Oh, it doesn't say. I believe it's the brights, so. though. It's the number one. It has um, it's like gold, a green, a mauve. This is the silver, a copper, a purple, and a like a turquoise. And it, it goes quite a ways. So that that will be your big extra in your um, in your box for February. It's actually a ten dollar value. So that's your extra. So with that, I we will then paint our one set of chickadees. Whoa, here he goes. We will do with the metallic finish to go with our birdhouse. So we have our metallic chickadees. But then you will have the option, if you don't like the metallic chickadees, I'm also going to spend one night painting them out. So you're not, you're not getting two, two, two sets of chickadees. You're not getting four chickadees. You're just getting one set of two. And you'll have the choice of doing them in the copper, or not the copper, in the metallic, which you could do the copper. I just use the silver and then the silver on the roof. Or if you don't like the metallics, um, we'll be painting them out too. So we'll spend the night painting them out to look like real birds. And then we'll do that same thing with the cardinal. Do you have the cardinal birdhouse, the copper one? It's not done, but um, the copper one is missing its dowel and um, perch. So then this one we'll do with copper. Um, it has the rust and a light brown and a cream white in it. So it has the marbled look to it too. It's kind of hard to tell on the camera. And then it's got the copper roof. And then you'll have the two cardinals that we will do with the um, copper on them. And if you don't like the, the metallic again, um, there will be another choice of another night. I'll actually paint those out, and that's what I'm working on tonight to get those painted out to look like real cardinals. So you'll be getting one set of cardinals but two options um, of how to paint them. So you're getting the rub-on technique plus you're getting the dry brushing um, technique on these guys too. So that should be um, should be fun because it's just more options and um, should be fun. And we're doing the sponging on the birdhouses too, which is kind of a marbling technique. So it's kind of hard to tell. It looks really dark on the camera, but it's not as dark as it looks. And then this is the copper on the roof, and that's what we'll put on the on the cardinals. So that's those guys. What? I like, I like the copper and the silver. I'm going to take a cough drop here quick. 
Coronavirus. Snowing by someone? Oh, um, we're supposed to get snow to tomorrow, I guess, and Saturday and Sunday and windy and cold. So, so we'll go back to our penguin stack. That was just a quick view of our bird situation for February. So again, I'm just going to keep lining my um, outline of my penguins out. Brush that out. And then let's see, I talked to Clay Magic yesterday. Our molds for our boxes um, from March through September will ship on Monday, Monday or Tuesday, she said. Um, they could have shipped yesterday, but I wanted the sloth in there and I have to wait till Monday to have that added. So I just had them hold, hold the pallet till Monday so we could have that. And then there was another item on there that they haven't even announced yet, so I'm. That other thing? Yeah. yeah, we were able to get the other thing that I can't say because they haven't announced it yet, and that's why the palette is um, on hold till Monday, because they will be announcing it. Okay. So. So we have some pretty good. Yeah, so we have some nice stuff coming. Um, let me see, little gnomes, mush, a mushroom, dragonflies, butterflies, fairies, fairy house, um, hedgehogs, a continuation of the Halloween box from last year in September, more pieces to go with that. Um, what else was there? It was a lot of dollars worth, I can tell you that much. Um, so I kind of can't wait to get it. I actually only only ordered um, four extra molds, five. I forgot about the fifth one, a piggy bank. Um, the extras were the gangbuster kitten that goes with Jack and the gangbuster dog that goes with Jack. I used to get that from the local shop, but I can't get that anymore. Um, and the kids like that, so I did order those two molds. Then this other thing that I really can't say because... It's not even announced that it's available yet. And then the sloth. Otherwise, all the molds are for the bis boxes, which is fun, too. Yeah. But it's fun always to get extra things, too. I'm just lining this guy out. So we kind of have a fairy garden theme, a garden theme, a Christmas in July theme, um, jingle in July. Um, August is animals, that'll be the hedgehogs. And then September will be the Halloween, continuation of the Halloween box. So if you're listening tonight, you kind of got a, a news, news drop, <laughs> news drop. <laughs> So, so I'm just going to keep lining this guy out. And then the molds, they when you call, they make the molds. So the molds, then they're made out of plaster. So they're very wet when they come. So you can't pour them right away. They're actually going to go in the living room with a fan on them because it's heated in the house and fan will help get them dried out because I need to get pouring on the March box boxes to get the samples done. Which, oh, that's the Easter box. We forgot to tell you, we have an Easter box. That'll be March. Um, it's pretty cute. It has to do with bunnies and Easter eggs. Um, Courtney says she picked it out. <laughs> and then the extra in that box is going to be, can I tell that? I probably did already. A box of chalk. That's for that month. Yep, a box of chalk comes in the March box. And it's huge. And it's um, a big box of chalk. It's not not Wait, little. Um, it's not the little half sticks. It's full piece um, sticks. It's from Royal and Lang Nickel, so it's a good quality ceramic for ceramic. Can be used on the ceramics. You'll just brush your brush back and forth on it. Um, I do like the little square containers of chalk, the cake chalk, but that's no longer available and I tried to find it everywhere. I tried to make it 
and I finally gave up. And Royal and Langnickel was able to um, provide us so we could purchase the, the chalk, and we already have it, in fact. So they've been great to work with. Love working with those, um, Sherry and Tom. So, so we're just going to keep lining this guy out. And you got to keep turning him. Talk to the lady that um, owns the house that we will be hopefully having our classroom in come spring. And it's approximately 20 by 24, so that's going to make a nice big classroom just in that one room. And there's some other rooms there, too. So I can't wait to get out of the basement and into that classroom. Just for classroom space alone. So I'm just lining this guy out. I'm using my... Um, Royal Majestic 5-0 liner, 4595. And we do have that available. We have a better quality one also. Um, actually, we have a whole box of brushes. Yep, Cordy had to, all those she didn't have to trace down. It was the paint she had to trace down. Good thing I didn't put the wrong address on the um, brushes because that would have really been something. <laughs> well, they should have sent it back to Glazers. They shouldn't have... Um, just delivered it at somebody's house. It's random. So, so I'm just going to keep lining my little guy out here. So once you get get it all lined out, you know, I had my liner turn there and kind of gobbed it up. So I'll have to straighten that out a little bit. So, you, I mean, that happens because I'm talking and not paying 100% attention here. So I can tell you it's a lot funner to go mold hunting and spend several hundred on a trailer load compared to a couple thousand <laughs> on a handful. So... But we want to have new molds for the box so that we can always buy more more as our subscribers grow so that um, the product can be available and not poured from worn out molds. So, so. so I'll just keep bringing this around. Just line it right up there. And paint it out. Let's see what else is going on. Well, the next project is slip, I guess. Next expense, next expense Courtney says, you yep. know. So I'm just going to line him out again, start out away from it, and then merge up to it. That way I can see right where that black line is. And that was a whole lot of paint, so I got to brush that out here first. Wouldn't think a liner could carry that much paint. Must have scooped it up. So the chalk will be nice because, like on um, for like blushing the cheeks, you can use the chalk to blush cheeks. We're gonna use them on the Easter eggs. You just keep working it around. Oh, so Cordy posted the hell or the Valentine's col colors, and you can go to Brenda's Brushstrokes and Biz.com. And they're not set up as four packs because um, you can't like manage the inventory on there like that um, but you can just add the colors to your cart and purchase them or if you're getting a box you can message Corey and she can um, pull them 
and then they would ship in your box um, for free shipping. If they have their own stuff shipped in the box, they need to message and check on them all the same. Um, so Courtney says anytime you want anything added to your subscription box to message her instead of checking out on the website because the website's going to add shipping. So if you message her, she can add it to your subscription box invoice and that way um, we're covering the shipping and as long as the stuff fits in the box anyway. You know, if it's a big piece of bisque and we can't get it in there, then that that won't work. But um, she says most supplies like paints and brushes, and um, I think she's even got a can of sealer in there already. Quite a, quite a bit of stuff we can get in there, but if it's another big piece of bisque, um, that might not work so easy. But you just message us, and then she adds it to your invoice that she sends on the first of the month. So we got him all lined out. And let's see, I don't I didn't I didn't do the hat in black, so we'll just let that the way it is. And I'll line my hat out up to the hat. Um you could paint it all black, the hat, and then dry brush it, but I painted it navy and then dry brushed it with the light blue, the medium blue. So I'm just resting my piece on the table, resting my hand on the piece. I did notice that it's um, daylight longer. It was still daylight at like 10 after 5 tonight instead of at quarter to 5. So our days are getting longer. The painting is far away? So Courtney's trying to zoom in. So I'm just lining up the black of the penguin head to the hat. Then you want to brush that out because you don't want rivers and floods going on. Oh, another thing that's going on is a friend of mine went to um, New Mexico on vacation, kind of a snowbird. And the Skyline Molds are down there, and they make that large Cigarro um, cactus that's 15 inches tall. And she's been gracious enough that um, when she visits Albuquerque, she's going to stop and bring it back for me. I already ordered it and paid for all she has to do is stop and pick it up and bring him home. So by the end of April, I'll have um, that big cactus mold, which I can't wait to get. Um, the shipping is um, really expensive on that, and they don't go to shows. So that was the only way to get it is by having it shipped, and that wasn't possible because the shipping costs as much as the mold almost. It, um, Courtney asked if it comes in more than one side. Yep, it comes in several sizes. Right down to salt and pepper shaker size. And I believe we have the salt and pepper shaker size, yep. And we have about a six inch one too. So I have that all brushed out. And now I can actually switch to a um, larger brush. But before I do that, I'm actually going to switch to my eyes because my liner brush is loaded up really nice and um, it's just working really good. So I have him rested on the table and resting my hand on him. I'm going to start from the top and work down. If I would start from the bottom and work up, I'd have my hand in the black paint from the eyes. So we're going to start from the top and work down. And I just want to line out his eyes. I usually start at 1 o'clock and go right in that little indent. Um, his eyes are pretty easy because they're just black with a little... C stroke in them and a little um, dot. Although you could do the blue and the white if you wanted to take the time to do it that way.
and then I'm going to turn him to get the bottom here. And I'm going to add just a drop of water to my brush and dip it in my black and thin that out just a little bit so it flows a little bit better. It's just a little thick from being on the foil here and drying out while we're painting. Mm, still ain't doing it. Someone's kind of not cooperating. I'm just going to let him sit for a little bit and come back to him. So sometimes when something isn't painting the way you want, just leave it sit and then... Um, even go to the next set of eyes and then then just come back to it because it just sometimes it just doesn't work work when you're at doing it at that moment so it's just better to just leave it and come back so we got him looking pretty good and then you want to look at them to make sure they're kind of even now he does have a little bit of black down here just sticking out a little bit I don't know if you can see it it's just it's beyond the eye a little bit so I'll fix that when we're done but for now, we'll go to the next set. And again, I usually start out about 1 o'clock and come up over the 12 and then come around. And then paint that out so it's not a lump. Well, if you wanted extra birds, um, maybe you want to paint the metallic birds and the painted out birds, just send us a message and Courtney can make a note on the on, on her spreadsheet and we can add that to your invoice. How much is the extra set of birds, Courtney? Um, the, the birds are $10 a set if you want an extra set. Um, and the birdhouses are 15 for the pair or 750 each. Maybe you just want the tall skinny one or just the fat one or the both of them. So if you would want extra sets or pieces, just let us know and yep. Then Courtney can add it to your invoice because you may want to do the metallic bird and the painted out bird. Um, those those birds are one of my best sellers on that craft shows. That's kind of why we did them. Everyone kind of likes the birds. And those are, yep, those are new molds. Those aren't the old molds. Um, those are Riverview molds. We had to have them shipped too because they don't do um, shows anymore. Um, I forgot where he's from. But a great guy to work with too. So, and really nice, good quality molds too. So I really like Riverview molds. He came right away too. Yep, he shipped them right away. In fact, one was um, I had to order a, a camel for a nativity set um, that I needed for Christmas, and he actually must have had that one and shipped it like within two days. So that was really, really nice of him to do that. So I'll come back and touch these eyes up later. Um, I'll let them dry. And then make sure that one looks like the other one. I'm gonna dip that in a little water and thin that out just a little bit more.
And just started at one and whipped it around there. And got a little extra peak on the top there that I'll have to cover up with white later. This is probably the slowest part of these is doing the eyes. The rest of them paint paints up pretty quickly. Let's see what else is going on. We haven't done any mold hunting lately. It's too cold out for that because they're usually in cold garages or sheds somewhere. So his, um, this right eye I have a lot fatter than the other eye, so I either have to make one skinnier or one fatter. So I'll probably make one fatter because it's take more weight to make it, the other one skinnier. And then I got it wider than the other one. So that one's going to need some touch up. So let's see, the other thing I did, I ordered two calligraphy books off of Amazon. One was $5 and one was $6. One of the ladies that I, um, the last craft show that the, the host I actually taught at our technical college in Green Bay. And I asked her if I could take a couple classes from her. So in February, I'm going to, the weather cooperates, I'll be able to go to her house a couple Saturdays and take some calligraphy classes. Um, hopefully that'll be helpful for painting words on ceramic pieces. I know it'll be a little different, but I'm hoping I can have some cute scroll type writing on snowmen and stuff. Kind of watched one video on YouTube. I guess it's it's actually based on like nine different strokes and you make all of your alphabet with those nine different strokes once you learn those nine strokes. Do you make each letter like one letter may have three strokes to it. You just put those strokes together to make your letters. So I don't think it's going to be too difficult. Probably easier than these eyes. Because they're kind of looking wacky here tonight. They don't even need cross-eyed dots. They already look cross-eyed. But we'll clean them up. So we'll just let those guys dry and I'm going to wash out my brush. So I have my little brush cleaner in there and I'm just going to drag my crush, brush back and forth across it, turning it so I get all sides of it. And you can see that's cleaned all that paint out of there right up, up to the ferrule. And that's what you want, nice clean brushes. And I'm not going really hard. I'm just gently rubbing it back and forth across it because you do want to take care of your brushes really well so they last. And this one I left lay on the table from when I was painting before you guys were here, so I'm going to brush that one out. So now I switched over to a, it's our Royal and Lang Nickel, I think it's a size 8, yep, it's a size 8, I wipe my hands off. And now we can actually paint out our um, penguins here. And you just want to brush back and forth. Careful not to get your faces. You want to get down in those holes a little bit. If you have a really scruffy brush, um, it's a good idea just to save one brush just for holes. I don't have a scruffy brush here, I don't think. I'll have to bring one. I have a couple that are used just for holes because they get all, the ends get all bent out of shape. So you might want to like pick out one of your cheap cheap brushes that you don't mind if it gets wrecked because it'll it's going to push all the little hairs all out. 
Um, and then you just, because you do want to get that paint down in those holes too to cover up that white. And then I'm just going to brush back and forth. And you'd want to brush right onto your bottom. Now this one I'm not going to do because it's got a pinhole on it and I want to fix that first. But you go right onto your bottom, brush it out, brush back and forth. Don't brush real aggressive and hard so you splatter paint all over. And I need some more black. How are we doing on time? Five to eight, she says. Not too bad. Excuse me, I had to take a drink before I'm coughing again. I'm just going to brush that out. And you have your light hole. You want to go inside that light hole to get that nice and black. So everything looks nice in case you're showing it to somebody or someone picks it up to look at it. And then you'll notice with the ceramic paint, it, like the brush strokes, by the time it dries, the brush strokes are almost gone out of, the, out of it, and it's nice and smooth, and that's the good thing about ceramic paint. Um, the Duncan and the Mako and the Doc Holiday, it does that, versus the cheaper paint that's going to let the brush stroke marks. So when you're dry brushing that, um, it's a nice, nice smooth surface to dry brush on. So this guy, you just got to brush him all the way out, get him covered up with black. Yes, he lights up. He gets those little um, pin lights. The pin lights go in those holes. Oh, let's see if we can switch him out here. So your clip light will go in the hole here in the back, and then your pin lights, the light's going to show through those. And there's three set snowflakes on one side and then two flake snowflakes on the other side. Right. Right, so this um, this snowflake is actually embossed into the bis into the greenware when it's still wet. I do that, and then I punch the holes in it too with a round um, cutter. So that that's not how the mold comes. It comes without that. That's an extra design I add. So I'm gonna get some more black here and just brush it out. And see now I splattered on my um, face here. So I'm actually going to let, I'm not going to wipe that off and smear it all over. I'm going to let that dry. And once it dries, you can take your fingernail and kind of pluck it off. And then you can just touch up a little bit of the white. If you, if you wipe it now, it's going to smear black all over. I'm out of frame. So if you have a get a splatter like that, just let it sit and let it dry, and then um, later you can pluck it off, and that way it doesn't smear that black all over that white on you. I'm just gently going in my holes so I don't ruin my brush. But if you have a, a old beater brush, you can use that or pick one out to be your beater brush. And then just use that for holes. I'll just bring one from home. I got some beat up at home. I don't want to wreck it. It's a nice brush. I'm just brushing back and forth. And then I want to go back and look where I painted before in case any little fleas show up. Like right there is one. And anything, any little white spots, we just call them fleas. We had a lady that owned a shop in town, and she was probably in her 70s, and she always, she always called those little white flecks fleas, so kind of stuck with, That's why. stuck, yep, that was why. Kind of stuck with me forever. I had to paint those fleas, and they kind of are fleas because they're kind of annoying like fleas. <laughs> they just kind of pop up. You think you have it all covered, and then all of a sudden, there you go. You got some fleas. So they're just like fleas. They come around. I'm just brushing back and forth and brushing them out. 
Am I getting close to the camera? So if you want for next week, your two um, the other two little pieces, you can just base coat them entirely black. So we'll start out with those entirely black next week. Um, since we're doing the base coating this week for anyone new. Um, so just base coat them totally black from head to toe, even the bottom. Um, bellies and everything, yep, the whole thing, head to toe. And then those guys um, will be doing a lot of dry brushing on them instead of the painting out like this one. Um, that way you can kind of see the difference with the because they're similar pieces with the black and the white. The white. There'll be um, like this is a more stark stark line between your black and your white. Um, their black and white is going to have more of a softer line transition because of the dry brushing. So that'll help. Um, for you to see the difference between dry brushing and painting. Courtney says, I'm wandering south again, so I'll move it back down. I'm trying to see in those holes. No, it's okay. So just brush back and forth. Try to be careful around the face. Otherwise, you'll have to touch it up, which isn't a big deal either. It's just extra work. These guys are fun to paint. They go really quick. Um, we will do some dry brushing on them. We'll dry brush the white around the, on the snowflakes. So there I just got the face being a little bit quicker than I needed to be. So no questions tonight? Oh, Cordy says everybody's quiet. Cordy says you're all, everyone's frozen. I don't think everyone's frozen. There's a lot of people that are not where it's six degrees out like it is here. I had to put gas in before I came. I didn't really enjoy that too much. So we're just brushing it out. You do want a nice Nice base, nice even base coat. You don't want rivers and puddles and drips. Just make sure piece look nicer. And then where we're going to dry brush on the snowflakes, um, if you'd have those ridges from the paint, then you'd have ridges on your dry brushing too. So. Now you can see this was dried really nice and you, there's no brush marks there. So that's that's what's nice about the ceramic paint. It's got like a self-leveling leveling agent in it. So I'm not going to jam my brushes in those in that hole too much. I'll bring one next week and um, touch those up some more. But you want your holes nice and black too. So when you stick your um, lights in there, you don't see that white through through them. And you should have more than enough lights in your package. So I'm just touching them up, looking for the fleas. And I'm going to do a little bit of the bottom, but then I'm going to leave about half of it so I can finish, fix my little pinhole. It's more than a pinhole. That's why it's not acceptable. So I'm going to wash out my brush. And I'm just going back and forth on my brush cleaner. Then I'll dab it on my paper towel. So now I have this, um, this little dot of black on here, and I'm just going to take my fingernail because it's dry now. You can just pick it off. And so it only lets a little bit of a um, smear of black. If I had wiped it right away, I'd had a lot of um, smear of black. So now I'm going to go back to my liner and my white. And we'll touch that up and you just want to brush that out and I'm going to touch up anything else that I got white where I don't want it or black around my white that I don't want like I did right there and then we're going to look at these eyes and see if we can um, too far north there Courtney you missed that touch up my little black around my eyes where they're not quite the way they need to be Gardens and trees. Oh, Cordy says you guys got gardens and trees blooming. Aren't you lucky? Yeah, no 
we have snow and ice. My koi pond is covered with ice. There's one little hole where the de-icer and the, well, there's two holes, one for the de-icer and one for the aerator. I won't be seeing those guys till probably the middle or end of March. So I'm just touching up around my eyes so they look, look a little neater. And I'm just doing that with my white. It looks like I got black on my hand, so I got black all over his cheek there. So now when I when I look at this um, this face on this left side, my black is coming down onto my white, and it looks okay. But if I trim that out with the white a little better and bring it back, it'll look a lot better. And it'll probably take a couple of coats. So it's not a whole lot that I'm bringing it back, but just a little bit. And it's just enough that that black isn't on the face because right now it looked like it was on the face. So you want to look at details like that when you're painting. So that looks better and it's going to take another coat probably. So let's see, does this eye needs touching up? Yep. Cordy says not to forget about the ball stylus. I think we'll probably do the, um, the nose first. So now I'm going to look at him again and we'll let that dry where I just did that. And now we'll look at um, our next set of eyes. So if you let, like now we left the, those eyes dry while we did the um, base coating. Now my black isn't smearing with my white and it's nice and dry. So I, I like to um, just let that dry like that. So his eyes looking all oblong and out of shape here, so we got to fix this up a little bit. He's looking goofy. And sometimes you got to do that three or four times. There's nothing wrong with that. Just um, keep at it till you get it. And sometimes if you have a day where you just can't get it to do do it at all what you want, leave it and come back another day. And you, sometimes you can just sit right down and do it the first time. It's just that sometimes they just don't cooperate. Like I just put too much white in there now, so I'm going to have to fix the black again. But that's how it really goes. So there's a little zig in his little peak here, so we're going to straighten that out. So that's a little better. And now we'll go down to the next one. And let's see, his eyes aren't too bad, but they need a little bit of touching up. And I did too much. And I evened it out, so it's okay. And this one's a little um, peak pointy right here on the side, so we'll round that out a little more. So you just work at them a little at a time until you get them. He's looking a little wide on this side, so we'll see if we can narrow him up a little bit. Okay. 
asked what liner brush you're using. Um, the liner brush I'm using is a Royal Majestic um, 5-0-4595 liner. It's the one that's in our beginner's brush set. And, and you, I think you can buy it separately, too, on the dot .com page. But we also have a, um, a new one coming that's a, a grade up from this one, and it's, um, it's pretty comparable to my Silver Falcon liner. I actually really, really like it. Um, it is a Royal and Langnickel um, one. They they compared it to the Duncan or not the Duncan the Donna eye brush that everyone used to like. I guess um, I, I compare it to my Silver Falcon liner, so I do I do really like it, and I ordered a bunch of them. Um, Cordy has to get those on our web page yet. So if you want an even better liner, I mean this is a good starter liner. Um, I'm not sure what the price is on um, that one. <clears throat> the new one is probably a mid-quality to higher quality, and then like the highest quality for me is the um, Silver Falcon one. But we only we were able to get those at the show last August, and then we sold out, and we haven't been able to get a hold of the gentleman. Um, but this is a Silver Falcon 10-0 liner, and I the um, Onyx. I just love love these liners. Um, they, these run like fifteen to twenty dollars, but we got a show special, so they were twelve ninety nine, I think. Fifteen. Oh, that was the sale price. Um, she says they're normally over twenty, but this is a really this is like one of the best liners out there. Um, the one that we just got this week is it's in between these two. Um, it's closer to that one than it is to this one. But this is a pretty good one too for the for the price. It's a good value. So, and it's the one that's in the beginner's brush kit. All the um, brushes I paint with on camera are the beginner's brush the gold set. What is it? Gold Talcon script five zero. Yep, it's a gold Talcon um, script five zero. She thinks it's about an $8 brush. Um, so it, it's better than this one. And um, this is a $5 brush. Um, where did it go? The other one is like a $20 brush. And so, but I, I think you'd be happy with the um, that new one that we got. That's why I got it. I got, actually got quite a few of them. I'm really happy with it when I tried it. Uh, yeah, I was really happy with it because a good brush is half the problem. If you have problem with eyes, get yourself a good brush, and that'll probably solve half half of your problem. And this this is a good brush too. It's just um, a little bit cheaper. Um, it's but like Cordy says, it's budget friendly, but it's still a good brush. So. Now I got these eyes touched up and looking pretty good. Nothing real obvious that's out of line. I'm going to wash out my little liner. Cody says we have a question. Mm -hmm. Oh, so we have a um, question about sealer. I usually use, um, it depends what I'm doing. I, I will use brush on sealer for certain things. We used it in our um, Halloween box. Um, we brushed it on in a certain area and then we sprinkled glitter on. You can use a brush on gloss sealer, a brush on matte sealer. Otherwise, the aerosol sealer comes, it's, which is a spray. It comes, um, we have Duncan. There is matte, which has no shine to it all. There is satin, which has a semi gloss just a little bit of shine to it and then there's the glossy which is very very shiny it makes something look like it's glazed so the matte glaze the matte sealer is what i use on any kind of wildlife or um, birds so my chickadees were sprayed with the matte sealer there's very little if any shine to them it makes them look very natural um, if you use the satin sealer which is something i like to use on penguins and snowmen it has just a little bit of a shine to it, so it kind of has like a snow icy look to it. 
And then if you use the glossy sealer, you would use that on something you want really, really shiny um, to make look more like a, a gloss. Um, so even the birdhouses, so now the birdhouses, because they have the metallic on them, and you, I want that to have a little bit of a shine to it. Um, you can see when I, it has just a little bit of shine. I did use the, um, you gotta think for a minute, the satin sealer on this. So it has just a little bit of a shine versus the um, birds that I use the matte sealer on so that it looks more um, natural, um, like wildlife. So that's kind of how I determine what sealer I want to use. So a lot of that is personal preference. Um, Courtney brought up our samples. So these are our samples. We did a video on this, and that's on YouTube and on our page. So um, let's see, do we got them right? Yeah. No, I got them turned around. Okay, so here's our... Um, the one, this this one is is the matte sealer and he and it looks like it on the camera but there's there's no shine to him and that's what I use um, so now I, you can see there's really no shine there that's what I use on any kind of um, wildlife I really like that um, no shine to that and even the pumpkins I use that I prefer that on those too but when I turn it the light is hitting it it's it's not shiny at all there's no shine to this matte to this matte See, they renamed and switched the names around, so that's why I have to think about it for a minute. Um, Duncan did last year because they changed the labeling due to some regulations. So this is the matte sealer, and it's matte. It's flat. There's no shine to it. It's very similar to the prior porcelain. Then we have the middle one, which is the satin sealer, and there's just and there's there's not as much shine to it as it's showing on on the um, camera. There's maybe half half that amount. It, it's just barely has a shine to it, although it looks very, um, it looks kind of glossy on the camera. It's not. It's as half as shiny as what it's showing. I think it's just the light shining on it. So that's the satin, and it's um, a, like a semi-gloss. It's like half shiny. It's just got, like, that's a good picture right there. It's just got that little bit of shine to it. It's not a whole lot. Then we have the gloss. And the gloss is very, very shiny. It's like a piece that was glazed. Like it has a glassy look to it. Lots of shine to it. So that's the gloss sealer. And, and I do use that too. It, it just depends upon what, what you're doing and what you prefer. So that's the difference with, with the sealers. And that's on YouTube if you want to go to Brenda's Brushstrokes and Bisque on YouTube. Um, there's a whole video that explains that too. Then these are the brush-on sealers, and we carry these too. Um, we have Duncan and Mako. This is the matte, and, and they look the same in the bottle. It's just how they dry. Um, they're both great products too. There's nothing wrong with them. Um, everything's got its own use. Maybe you had a piece, um, um, for example, say those pickup trucks that you do. Maybe you wanted the hubcaps to be shiny. You could use this. I'd actually seal it first with... Um, probably the matte, the satin sealer, so it's got a little bit of a shine to it. But you don't want your tires really shiny, but maybe you want your hubcaps really shiny. So you could paint this on the hubcap area, and that would make just the hubcaps um, shiny after you had already sprayed the other area. So you, so you can actually use the both products on one item even. It all depends what, what you're trying to achieve. So I hope that explains that. And you just want to brush that out really smooth, and that should... Um, level itself out too and be really nice. So the September box had the gloss sealer in it, right? Mm -hmm. So our September box did um, have the gloss sealer in it. So we um, try to add different items that are extras in the boxes um, for you guys to try stuff out and it's part of the um, part of the project. Um, this time we have the um, ball sealers in in the, in the box, and we'll and we'll use those for doing our eye dots, and, and maybe in the future we'll use them for other projects too. Like on our Easter eggs, we can put dots, make dot patterns. You'll find these are really helpful. Even if you're cleaning green, if you clean your own greenware, you can use these um, to put detail back in your greenware. I I use this, them all the time for that. So they're great for that, putting the texture back in where your seam lines were. You want to do that when you're cleaning your greenware. 
and then it's there's different sizes so you just kind of match up the size of the ball to the size of the um, texture that you're trying to replace so so let's see we're going to go to our rust <coughs> excuse me anybody else got questions tonight before we're done and I'm still using that liner brush I just washed it out and again I'm going to start at the top and work my way down and I just want to line out my um, little beaks and then you brush it out and this may take a couple coats just because we put the white underneath it but that way it's a nice even coat or coat with the white and it's not dark in some spots and light in some spots So if you want to paint all your noses, your beaks for next week, I'm just have a nice coverage on them. Then we can pick up where we left off and we'll do the eyes and the hat. We'll dry brush the snowflakes. Um, glue, we'll seal them, glue in our, um, and we'll sprinkle the glitter when you seal it too on the snowflake. So that's another time you you could um, paint that brush on sealer just where the snowflakes are if you don't want it to get anywhere else or if you wanted it heavier and then sprinkle the glitter onto the brush on sealer. Um, I just, Cordy says give you a heads up for the glue. For the glue I just use the E6000 um, some people like to use just the craft glue or the tacky glue. So you just want to line out all your beaks, brush it out, and then do that with all of them and then come back and touch it up again so it's got a nice solid coverage. And I think that's probably where we're going to have to leave it because I kind of feel coughing coming on. We're probably close to 8.30, huh? 8.20. 8.20. Well, maybe if I don't um, talk too much and just keep painting. But I'm just lining out, out the beaks with the rust. That was the Doc Holiday rust, but if you have another color of rust or if you'd rather have orange, I mean, you, you don't have to paint them the colors that I use. Those are just um, what I used and is kind of a reference to start with. Um, the, for, forgot about this. If you open up your um, invent, your little, you also get this inventory sheet packet in your um, in your box. Courtney's going to move the thing for a mi minute. So you do get the inventory sheet in there, and you always want to look in there because there's little goodies in there too. So um, on one side is the inventory sheet. And then on the back side is the, if we can get the color flyer for the molds, um, then you would have this. So I believe the little ones, we couldn't get the color flyer, right? So if you open this up, oh, it don't, it's not in here? The little, the handwritten instruction. Not, right, the colored flyer don't exist, but um, I created the flyer, I created the instructions um, for the stack, and then there's a picture that Courtney did all, all of that. I just wrote out the instructions, and she um, we made our own flyer. And then for the little guys, um, Clay Magic does not have um, the color flyers for them anymore. So now you have um, the, our, our colored picture of them, and then the, the paint paint that we used, and then the instructions. So all of that, that from now on going forward, we will we'll have... Um, written instructions for the pieces in the boxes because we've had people that have internet connections um, that are issues and so they they have trouble following along and asked for written instructions so now we do have the written instructions the way I painted them. Um, Clay Magic probably has some on their website but they could be different um, instructions than what I, I painted by. Some of their older flyers have Oh. Right. Right. So this is um, this is a clay magic color flyer for the stack, and on their older 
don't get paint on it yet here. On their older flyers, they actually had the techniques of how they um, painted them. Um, the newer ones don't, but if you go to their webpage, you can download the PDF file of the instructions. Um, so they've actually painted them different than I do, um, but you still have this for reference if we can get them. Now next month we couldn't get them, so you'll you'll only have um, our instructions. But that's something new that's in your packet in case you didn't notice that. So you always want to look in your um, inventory package because there's little goodies in there. You never know what we end up sticking in there. Ugh. Oh, here we go. <laughs> I got it all stuck together. And the penguin stack's going to tip over and everything. <laughs> so Cordy's going to take care of that. So you do want to look in your little inventory package because there's goodies in there, including the um, typed up um, directions that we have and then the picture of ours. So hopefully that helps you guys out too. It's another little extra we've added to the package, something we've learned as we've um, gone along the way here. So if you guys have suggestions um, to help make the boxes better, let us know. Because we're always open to suggestions. If you have a problem with your box, let us know. We'll take care of it. Get it squared away. So I'm just lining out his little beak. And then we'll probably call it good for tonight. Oh, and Cordy says we have a giveaway. She forgot about it, so she's going to have to take care of that. I think that's from from last week that we were going to she was going to do on Monday, I think. It was for the anyone that commented for the Doc Holiday for new products. So she had requested last week if anyone um, had new product suggestions to um, post what you might like to see. Like I know someone put glitter, someone put fashion hues. Um, so she's going to put those name in a bucket quick and pull a name and you'll get three Doc Holiday paints, a black one, a white one. You pulled four and then you can message her um, what the other colors are that you want. Oh, Lexington green, leaf green, black and white. That's what you'll be getting. So she's putting the names in a bucket here so she can um, get everyone that commented what they would like to see us carry yet. So we're slowly adding things. Um, I think we're going to have the brush on glitter. Was um, We had a couple suggestions for that, so we'll try to get that in our February order because we'll be ordering in February, and then we won't be ordering until we go to the show in Ohio so we can help um, save on shipping. So now you can see that his rust has dried on his top beak, so I, and it's a little streaky, so I'm just going to go back and touch that up. So that's what you'll want to do too. And then if you want to do more homework, you can paint out, base coat your other two um, little penguins in black, and you could actually base coat your hat in the navy if you wanted. So I'm just touching up my little, getting another layer of rust on there to cover up the little streakiness. And if you wanted, you could use orange or yellow too, it doesn't matter. It's just the colors I usually um, put mine. So again, I start like at 1 o'clock and bring it around. And then go the other way. And we'll probably have mold. Um, pictures for you. Hopefully they if they ship Monday or Tuesday. They should be here Wednesday or Thursday. Oh, if they come Thursday, that might be a problem. Um, we might have to keep you guys posted on next Thursday because if the molds molds come, I might have to run late. I'll just run late because. Um, my nephew, they're delivered to my nephew's work, so we'll have to get them to get them out of the way. And it won't take that long because there's not that many. <laughs> uh, 
but um, hopefully it ships Monday and they get here Wednesday. Um, otherwise, if it's Thursday, we'll Courtney will post in the BizBox group. Um, if we're going to be running late, it shouldn't be too late, maybe an hour or so. So I'll have to keep her posted when they um, come. I'm hoping it's Wednesday. That'll solve that. I'm going to go back here and touch this one up because I can see some white through it yet. And then my next thing is to learn how to mix slip. So if there's anyone out there with experience to that, with that, um, and you want to mentor me, send me a message, and I would greatly appreciate it. I'm going to be calling um, one of the suppliers tomorrow, so I'm hopefully, hopefully they can give me the insight that I need. Um, we're hoping we can reduce the cost of the slip because the um, freight on it is out of this world, and it's gets more expensive every time we order. So I'm, um, as Cordy said, the freight is more than what the slip. So hopefully uh, buying just the dry product and mixing it and not paying for the water being shipped in the slip, I can start making my own. So that's the next thing that I want to try to do. So if there's any experienced slip makers out there, I'd appreciate your help. So Courtney's working on our drawing. Like I said, I know we're adding the brush on glitter for next month. Not sure what else. <coughs> Excuse me. Courtney said maybe some more glazes. You guys seem to like the glazes. Um, probably not a whole lot of stuff because I'm getting low on slip, and that is my next um, purchase. So, last time when it came, and we had a foot of snow, actually like 18 inches of snow that week, and I had to postpone it a few days. So hopefully, we don't have that happen this year. That should be the fourth week of this cough, so hopefully I'm almost through with this by then. That'll be the next good thing to happen. Oh, Tesselon Pearls. Um, they said it's viral, and I have to wait it out. Oh, they said it usually takes four weeks. So we'll see. We'll have the fourth weekend here next week. And oh, never had that trouble with it. Um, that's the stuff I had used was was Gear, which is a product they don't even carry anymore. Uh, Marlo had. She showed me her bottle. She likes it. She don't have trouble with it. So, yep. I'm going to finish out this beak, and then we'll pull a name because Courtney's got that ready. And then I'm going to finish up the cardinals before I leave here so she has those. And I think her and Jason can handle the dolls and the Spanish moss. Or not? No, in the birdhouse for the pictures. Oh. Oh. <laughs> she says she'll figure it out. Might be crazy. Yeah, she's oh not. God. She's not the crafty girl, but I think she can handle a doll and Spanish moth and some glue. Well. The Spanish moss can cover up the doll, I guess, if you don't. <laughs> Lisa, you can take pictures, because I'm sure everyone's waiting for pictures. And then she can get the pre-order posted for any one-time um, purchases of that box. 
Um, but get, again, if you want any extra birds, you'll have to uh, message us though, because she'll um, add them to the invoices then. So I'm just going back and giving a second coat because that white's on there and you can see that, see through that, see that through the rust. And then because um, we're getting the molds from March through September, I'm hoping I can at least get the um, samples poured and starting working on the, on the pieces for those boxes so we can get ahead because we're kind of still down here to the last minute. It's already the middle of January and I only have half of them poured. Um, although with the big kiln now I can fire everything at once, which is really nice. Except I did learn I have to load the back of it before I load the front of it so I don't bang the stuff in front of it and knock an arm off a snowman. Ask me how I know. Oh, the Go Pack Go Snowman, that was the order. So, because I have to stand on a step stool to do it, and I was reaching over what I had put in front, but now I, I'll put the stuff in the back first and then put the stuff in the front. So it's always a learning experience. So we got our little rust colored beaks here and I think we'll call it good for the night so I can get the cardinals done and I'm just gonna wash out my liner. So if you guys want, you can base coat the hat with the navy, do the beaks with, to make sure you have a nice coat on it and then these two guys you can do from head to toe, base coat them with the black, and we can probably start some dry brushing on them next week too, maybe. Huh? Yes, Linda, it was. <laughs> but I have a new one waiting to get carved out. I'm hoping to have him done by um, Saturday for you. <laughs> I told on myself. So Courtney's got a pile of um, names here of everyone that... Um, commented a product, so let's see who we got. Everybody's got their fingers crossed, and our winner is Lisa Carlton. Glow in the dark paints. Okay, super. So Lisa Carlton, if huh? Okay, so um, if you can send us your email or not your email, your actual mailing address. Oh, Courtney's got your mailing address. Never mind. So you have won the Doc Holiday um, Black, Lexington Green, um, Leaf Green, and then some white. So these are great colors for lots of things. I use these all the time. So congratulations to Lisa Carlton for suggesting glow in the dark paint. So I'm sure Cordy has something in line for Valentine's. We'll see what she's got lined up sale wise or something. So look forward to a sale with all the new brushes that we ordered, which will be our Valentine's box, Valentine's sale kind of. Um, but any Bisboxers subscribers are going to have a pre-sale. So watch. Um, that way it'll ship in your February box. So she's going to be doing that pretty quick then. So that will be in the BIS box subscription group, or how are you going to do it? Um, Cordy will be posting the brush pre Valentine's brush sale in the subscription BIS box group, so you guys can watch for that. Um, if you're a subscriber, you'll be able to pre-order, and then they'll ship in your February boxes. Mm -hmm. um, it's a better quality of dry brush and a better quality of liner. Um, plus, we got uh, more stock of our regular um, dry brushes and then some few other um, different little brushes that I, of course, she wanted to try out. So, Lisa Carlton, Courtney will be mailing these guys out to you. Thanks, you guys, for joining us tonight. Sorry I have this cough. Hopefully, it's gone by next week. Have a great week. Stay warm. And we'll catch you next week.